Hello and welcome back to Eternal Esports versus Omega Gaming Unleashed. This is game two of a potential three-game series. However, judging off of that game one, I'm not 100% sure we're going to get to that game three. An absolute stomp right there uh, from Omega Gaming. However, we will be going into the second pick ban phase and already we're seeing the Yasuo there banned out. From game one. Now, he did have a lot to work with that team. He did have a lot of pressure right there from his jungler. But at the same time, we talked about how big the bot lane is going to be there from Omega. And whether or not Eternal, with their first pick on blue side, is going to have the solutions for it this game. They decide here that they're going to go for a blind pick mid lane. They're really valuing this Oriana pick as a, a potential, as a blind pick mid lane and also just a comfort pick for their mid laner. You know, doing a little bit of scouting so that this, this Ori was really feeling comfortable for him. But when we talk about the, the Yasuo ban coming through, it also does deny the Gragas as well. So, you know, it's sort of a Tarik Yi situation and a Karthus Nunu of old, where you ban one of the <laughs> champions and the and the other champion just falls by the wayside a little bit. But already from Omega, re-picking up the Karma here. And uh, interesting to see whether or not, because with a first pick mid laner, really opens you up to pick up another mid lane for yourself, typically in first rotation, which is something that you don't often see in drafts. Yeah, oftentimes in a draft, you either go for the jungle and then either the bottom lane or an occasional third pick in the top lane right there. Usually it's very, very difficult, uh, as opposed to a solo lane, to counter pick uh, so hard for bot lane or jungle. So going for that early mid lane pick it is going to mean they can pick whatever they want into that Orion, potentially giving them a very, very hard counter and a lot to work with in the most dominant lane on the map. However, it is going to be the Karma and Aphelios picked up for. We did see Karma in the top lane picked up last game, so you're going to have to wonder if it's going to be the repeat or if it's going to be support position right there for the Karma. Either way, the flex is going to bring a lot of value to this draft. It is going to be the Tristana Leona coming out there for Eternal. We did see the potential that they had there in the bottom lane to do work, and Unfortunately, they were not able to do a lot there against that Zaya Rakan. So hopefully with the, all that early game power they get from the Tristana, they can look to get an advantage there in the bottom lane. Yeah, they've got a really big all-in lane right now. You know, Tristana and Leona both excel at fighting in a two versus two. And something that actually slipped through the entire game one draft was this Aphelios. Didn't get picked or banned at all. And, you know, season 10 champion in a nutshell. <laughs> managed to get himself all the way through pick ban. Doesn't find it this time. Omega Gaming quite happy to pick that up in their first rotation, and it's exactly as you mentioned. They pick up the bot lane, uh, and also, you know, we talked about this Karma flexing. It can really go in any of the solo lanes. Mid as well, we've seen a lot of Ardent Sensor and Athene's rushing here to try and give a little bit of support to the Aphelios. Quick touch on the, the Thresh pick here is a really nice counter pick to the Leona. As soon as you see a Zenith Blade being cast... You can get to your AD carry and flay the Leona away. Also really good into the Tristana as well. You see a rocket jump starting. You can flay out and interrupt that channel as well. So definitely a lot of outplay potential for Vicro here on this Thresh. Absolutely. Not to mention how much value you can bring in repositioning uh, your Aphelios on that AD carry. He doesn't have any dashes as a kid, but he does have a lot of damage. So being able to get a good Lantern in there is going to provide a lot of value there. Uh, for that bottom lane now one thing he is vulnerable to a lot though is sort of these all-in dives they do have a lot of that right now in the oriana in the tristana in the leona they are going to be banning out a lot of champions like the jarvan like the rumble who can just cast their abilities on that adc and try to win the game off of getting him getting his life bar from 100 to zero meanwhile eternal are going to be banning out the mid lane and top lane Orn, probably one of the strongest champions in the game, wasn't touched that first rotation. Syndra, very, very good in the mid lane. She did just get a slight nerf, but she is going to be banned away. They do not have a mid laner yet for the side of Omega. Yeah, you know, Syndra ban here, obviously, super strong mid laner, even with the slight nerfs that came through. And targeting bans toward the mid lane, I'm glad that they didn't delve too hard into this because Omega always have the option, again, just to flex this karma into mid lane. And with a you know, potential uh, Nautilus Ooh. over here. This is something Ooh. a little bit different right now. You know, typically we see Leona and Nautilus both in this support role and maybe Eternal have got a spicy jungle or top lane pick here because, you know, in seasons gone by, Nautilus has been good 
are well adversed in the jungle and well adversed in the top lane. You know, when we saw door entering stacking and you'd go full tank afterwards, e maxing Nautilus has definitely been a thing. And we should have to wait and see what they end up going for. And Fiddlesticks as well. <laughs> this is a lot of flex potential here from Eternal. Absolutely. I If I had to guess, I would say it would be the Nautilus in the top lane with the Fiddlesticks in the jungle. Now, I love me some Nautilus top person. You can be very, very good uh, into a lot of meta top laners. I'm not entirely sure, too sure how well he's going to do against that Karma. I'm assuming it's the Trundle there in the jungle. But with the mid lane is the last pick for Omega. We have to see what the answer is to all this dive. Ooh, okay. and the answer to the dive is going to be dashes, it looks like. If I had to guess, it would be the Lucian in the mid lane there for Omega. We saw this guy on the Yasuo. So instead of playing the one uh, AD champion that has dashes, he's going to play the other one. That's an AD champion with dashes there in the mid lane. Lucian versus Oriana, a tale as old as time in the middle lane. What do you think about this draft? I mean, I really like it. It's something different from the norm. You know, we've got, oh, we've got Oriana mid lane and we've got Aphelio spot lane. But then you look around the rest of the map, we've got Nautilus solo lane. We've got Fiddlestick somewhere. We've got Lucian most likely in the mid lane. Maybe a Hooney cosplay going to come out with a Lucian top. But uh, we are also having uh, confirmation that the, the Lucian is actually an Aatrox pick. Um, oh, so something okay. a little bit different, but not quite as spicy as the Lucian, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, a little bit less spicy. And it does probably mean that it's going to be Karma there uh, in the mid lane. If I had to guess, and the Aatrox, he can be played mid, but if I had to guess, I would say he's going there into the top lane. He is going to be providing a very, very useful uh, position uh, for this team, Omega. I think he's going to be doing very well uh, into Nautilus. It's not a very common matchup these days, but judging off of how their kits work with Aatrox, you just love to keep them at a little bit of a distance versus Nautilus. You want to get up there as quickly and as soon as possible, but your really only to tool for dashing in uh, is your Q. So... As long as you don't get hit by that Nautilus Q, you're going to be able to put out a lot of damage there as the Aatrox. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how this top lane matchup does play out and also whether or not you know the champions do go top lane. We, I, we are expecting it. We do see the Nautilus locked in in top side. But it's, as long as this Aatrox, which is top lane as well, is able to stick within the minion wave, which is you know somewhere that an Aatrox is comfortable trading, he's really not going to be able to get connected on any dread lines from Rain on the top side, and it's going to make his trade patterns really straightforward, really easy, and going to enable him to use that E to connect on the sweet spot cues a lot easier because of he doesn't have that fear of getting hit by a dredge line. Absolutely, absolutely. And one other thing I would like to talk about here is going to be the jungle matchup. Now, in that game one, we saw Omega Gaming, we saw Simulacrum there on that Gragas, just kind of make the whole game a jungle difference. Unfortunately, Eternal Shreyu there, uh, on that Olaf was not able to do a lot for his team in the early game. So he is going to be on more of a uh, late game team fighter there uh, in the Fiddlesticks. Although he can get some pretty good uh, fights off there, especially once he hits six. However, I do anticipate Simulacrum going to be very, very, very proactive there in the jungle, going for those uh, camp steals, going for those uh, early favored skirmishes. That Trundle, he really can do that very, very well. So I'm very happy to see this kind of a pick coming out here for Simulacrum based on how he played there in the game one. Not to mention how well he's going to do there with the Karma mid lane to support him in these skirmishes. Yeah, we really are seeing a sort of switch up from the roles from the junglers game one to game two. This game, we've got Shreyu on a more late game style team fight focused jungler in this uh, in this game. Simulacrum going to be picking up the early game pressure focused jungler. Likely going to have a press the attack maybe a phase rush, something to give him that little bit of extra power in the early game. We'll have to wait and see whether or not he's able to pick it up and put it down the damage that he needs to, to get his team ahead early and get the Sophilios to the point where he's able to just shred through team fights. Absolutely. Absolutely. We talked a little bit about this earlier, but Karma Princeton on that Yasuo game one came up absolutely huge in a carry role. Now he's going to be playing the Karma, who, although she does have a strong lane, she's not going to be the big carry that the Yasuo was there game one. Instead, that power is going to be on Super Chase there uh, in the top lane, who's going to be playing the Aatrox. He is going to have to be a much larger carry role 
uh, for his team when we get to these team fights, not to mention how good adjustment is uh, on an 80 carry roll. But Super Chase there, as their one frontliner, is going to have to come up absolutely huge there uh, in that Aatrox fight. So we're probably going to be seeing Simulacrum there in the jungle, pressuring top lane a little bit more than mid lane like you did there in game one. Either way, we will be going to a short break. We have a quick word from our sponsor, so stick around. Welcome back to game two of our potential three-game series of Omega Gaming Unleashed versus Eternal Esports. Now, game one, that was, <laughs> your words, not mine, Rude, dude. A little bit of a stomp right there uh, for the side uh, of Eternal of, of Omega Gaming Unleashed. Eternal Esports fell very, very quickly in that one. How long did that first game last? Took about 23 minutes and could be looking for an early stomp here again. Ooh. Well, that hook is going to be missing, that Tristana. Could have been a very, very big lead, but she will get in a little bit of a poke right there from that Karma there in the middle lane. Uh, that would have been very, very big if they were able to get that kind of a lead for themselves there. However, they are going to go back to their lanes, trying to get a little bit of early vision there from the Trundle. He's going to get a very nice ward there on the Raptors. He's going to be able to see exactly where that Fiddlesticks is going to be for the first few minutes of this game. Very, very good stuff right there from the Trundle. Yeah, the ward going to be really useful, going to enable him to do as much pathing as he, or to alter his pathing as much as he wants. And Super Chase picking up that control ward early on, actually really big, helps Simulcrum out quite a lot when it comes to where his pathing uh, leads him to. Isn't going to get spotted out as easily. There is obviously a green ward on his Raptor pit right now, but mm. maybe with the timings he can uh, evade that with some nice pathing or just some good timing himself. And something to touch Absolutely. on we've got down here is, is actually another cool start for adjustment. We saw it in game number one, and we see it again in game number two, and in, in arguably an even more aggressive laning phase. Yeah, actually, this is going to be very, very ballsy right here for adjustment, going that Cole against the Tristana and Liliana, two very aggressive laners. So a guy, this guy is just showing absolute disrespect uh, right here against Eternal Esports, saying... I know that even if you win in, I'm good enough to win it, even with this kind of a disadvantage. Moving on the top lane, absolutely huge all in there from the Aatrox. Those Q sweet spots will do a lot of damage. Ooh, Thresho coming out, barely missing that Tristana, trying to get some kind of an early fight going. It would have been absolutely huge if that were to hit. Tristana still taking a lot of damage on the back end from these autos. That Thresh E is doing a lot of on-hit damage to Tristana. She's popping her potions, and she's still very, very low health. Great early game right here from Omega Game. Yeah, they're playing this lane really well so far, and you can understand the call if they're just going to outlane them like this. Unleashed uh, in this bot side, it was Eternity stepping up to try and get the level 2 that really caused the uh, issues. So another death sentence Ooh. does go wide. Yeah, but they were going to go for a little bit there on Tushana, trying to get something onto that. However, it is going to be the Trundle going for an early kind of an invade. Both flashes coming out right there. We have the fear, but the fear does not do anything after it finishes, nor does the silence do anything against the auto attacks. First blood in a wonderful invade coming right there from Simulacrum. Able to use his smite to get that last little bit of belt there for himself in that 1v1. And Fiddlesticks, who does not do well in the early game invades, is going to be giving up another advantage uh, over to Simulacrum in that jungle. Yeah, it's exactly what we wanted to see from the Trundle. A little bit of early game aggression and even better if he can put down Shreyu as well at the same time. He was able to go for that as well due to Super Chase's pressure on the top side. Princeton going to trade heavily here. Yeah, really, really big trade coming out here. And another gank there from the Trundle onto that Nautilus who blew his flash earlier to escape from the Aatrox. However, Aatrox, we talked about how important it's going to be for them to get ahead. He's going to be getting a very early kill against that Nautilus top here. Great stuff right here for Super Chase. Great stuff for Omega. I really hope that Eternal can do their best to sort of put a band-aid on this game so far. Four minutes in and already two kills and a 2k advantage 
going over to the side of Omega Gaming. Yeah, and obviously with this color as well, every CS it means a little bit more gold, a little bit more injection himself. Uh, adjustment going to be picking up, you know, an, an extra 30 gold, which isn't too much so far. But as soon as he gets that cash out, that gold cushion is going to balloon even more. And this Absolutely. top side of the map as well, we've seen Eternal Rain. He had to burn his flash early on. There's also maybe a gank bot lane. Oh, we are looking for something a little bit here with the fiddlesticks. We saw it, Leona trying for the engage uh, with her Zenith Blade. However, with the Thresh Blade, she is not going to be able to complete that. I mean, that she is not going to be able to get the follow-up there from the Fiddlesticks or the Tristana. However, Fiddlesticks walking back into his jungle is going to be met with the Karma and taking a lot of damage because of it. Thresh, still looking to go aggressive, is just barely going to miss that hook there onto the Leona. These, it could have been huge so far if some of these started hitting. However, the Tristana is still extremely low, so she has to play very, very respectful Thresh, almost dying to an empowered auto attack there from the Thresh. Meanwhile, we do see Trundle getting an advantage there in the jungle, smiting away that big Raptor. Uh, not if Karma has something to say about She is going to be looking for a little bit of trade there. However, maybe a tower dive coming up very, very close. Both of these laners uh, on the side of Eternal Esports are extremely low. Thresh is doing such a good job in pressuring the enemy lane, knowing exactly what to do on a pick like that. Yeah, he's doing really well at asserting the dominance early on and getting uh, the advantages for adjustment, putting him in a position to do the carry style that he did in game number one as well. We saw what he could do on a you know, less optimal mid lane trading though. Yeah, we are going to see the Orianna ultimate come out. She's trying to go for something on the Karma, but she is going to have the shield, meaning she's just going to have a little bit more health to get away with. Both laners do have the teleport. However, Karma does have the spell book. I mean, she's going to be in a slightly higher advantage once she gets back to lane, especially if she's able to teleport right here, right on top of this Orianna. Orianna does have the phase rush, however, meaning she's able to get away from this. However, she does not know all these guys are going to be stacking here in the mid lane brush. We do see the Nautilus. We do see the Fiddlesticks. Level 4 and level 6. Two kills coming out there for Eternal Esports, but not if the Aatrox has something to say about. He's using the teleport there into the mid lane. He's got a lot of damage. He's oh. almost able to get the reset there onto the Fiddlesticks, but he's going to be feared. He's going to be not able to finish off the Fiddlesticks. He flashes in, trying to get his empowered auto there, but not if the Nautilus has something to say about it. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, you do see just a huge engage there from Eternal Esports on to the Aphelios. He only has the BF Sword and the coal. That is no bonus health to work with and so much damage to work against. We don't have the Thresh to keep him safe and we don't have uh, Leona on our side to engage on the enemy. Coming up absolutely huge. Great plays here from Eternal Esports. An absolute difference from what we saw there in game one. Are we seeing two? Oh, oh. No, it's not going to be. She tried to go for the dive onto the Thresh, potentially getting a reset on her rocket jump. However, Trundle just munching on that Tristana, not going to let her be doing it. It's going to be a little bit of a clarifying there for tr for the Trundle. However, Eternal playing so much better this game than game one. This is an absolute turnaround so far. Yeah, really nice trade in the mid lane. They get themselves three kills as well, and then also the collapse onto adjustment in the bot lane is actually huge. The fact that they managed to get themselves the kill onto adjustment as a massive wave gets crashed under his turret means that they're going to really be able to catch up in the XP game, catch up in the CS a little bit more. You know, they're still sat 20 CS down and maybe a gank top lane with Fiddle nearby. Absolutely. He is very, very close there to that Aatrox. He's able to land his hook, but with Fiddle coming in soon, he will not be having his ultimate. He's only level 5 right now on the Fiddlesticks eight minutes into this game. You really need to be getting your level 6 a little bit sooner on that champion. You can imagine if he had it there, how much easier he'd be able to initiate this kind of a gank and go for all of that damage associated with it. Yeah, and that does come back to the early game invade that Simalcrum was able to get off. You know, that really does set you behind. Even just the one invade that he was able to get with Rain Ooh, But the hook landed right there onto the Trundle. He does have the still level 5 Fiddlesticks, but the Orianna does have her ultimate available. It was get a fat two-man ultimate right there. Fiddlesticks still level 5, not going to be able to do too much right here. And with the Karma keeping the Aatrox safe, it is going to mean no deaths uh, for the side of Omega Gaming Unleashed. Eternal Esports just absolutely turning this one around, being very, very aggressive here in the early game. And Eternal Shreyu, we really need that level 6, buddy. We really need those fat Fiddlesticks ultimate to start coming out and absolutely draining the enemy team. 
Yeah, look at it. He's, he's been walking around trying to get things done on the map for his team, and his entire jungle is currently up at the minute. Gromp goes down, Blue about to follow, and he does tick over to that level 6 mark, but you have to just think how impactful it could have been if he'd have got it a little bit earlier. And we see now, looking towards this bot side, Vicro still really trying to pressure Eternity here, keeping him away from the wave, keeping him away from as much CS as possible, trying to delay the storm razor as much as possible adjustment needing to get just a 30 more cs before he gets that cash out likely going to be looking to get himself the full infinity edge once that cash out comes through as well and they're really ah. go on really good uh really nice play from the bot laners right now absolutely you see that we have the leona here sitting in the brush we're not entirely sure if we have a vision on her from the side of Omega Gaming, or if they even know that she's there. And it's actually going to be the double stack right now, just how, how I like my pancakes, sitting in that bottom lane brush, hoping that they walk up a little bit too far. However, going for that vision, it is going to mean that they have to walk up, show their position, otherwise they're going to be giving up that CS. Meanwhile, on the top lane, we do see a little bit of trade happening right here. Aatrox going for a lot of fancy little backflips with his Qs. Meanwhile, Nautilus going to look for the, a lot of damage on those Es, get value out of his bomby cinder. Meanwhile, we're looking for some kind of a dive right here uh, in the bottom lane. It looks like we're setting up for a 4v4. We do have the teleport available right now on the Nautilus. However, he's going to be looking for some kind of a fight right here on the Aatrox. He really should be backing up trying to go for something here if we are looking for the 4v4 fight in the bottom lane. We do have another dragon coming up here really quick. But Nautilus coming up absolutely huge in these trades. Aatrox needs a little bit of time to scale, get some CDR for his Q. But the Nautilus ultimate coming out right now. Uh, we are going to see if he has enough damage running out of mana right now to deal with the Aatrox. And he's going to decide, you know what? I, I don't really want any of this. He's out of the mana. He's not able to cast any more of abilities. Meanwhile, in a pure auto race, Aatrox is going to have that healing against enemy champions. However, the shield coming out right there for the Nautilus, he does not have enough mana to cast his hook. You could just imagine if he did, he would have been able to get that solo kill for himself in a not very favorite team fight but fiddlesticks is going to be looking there for the engage there onto the trundle we do have the t uh, the thresh lancer coming out but it's not going to be enough to save that trundle right there a little bit too deep against so many engaged champions in the fiddlesticks and the leona the leona ultimate coming out first the fiddlesticks coming out trying out trying to get something there it's going to mean the second dragon of the game is actually going to be going to the side of eternal esports yeah, and a really nice turnaround from Eternal this game. They've managed to switch up the playbook. Game number one, they really got rolled over. And the start of this game number two as well, we mentioned it. Four minutes in, they were down 2k gold. But look at the scoreboard now. Five to three, got themselves a Drake apiece. And they're looking really nice in this team comp. And something else to note is that this team comp scales much better than their last one. Fiddlesticks compared to an Olaf indefinitely better in the late game they've got really good team fight as well with oriana leona nautilus as well going to be providing a lot especially with how far or how comfortable he is in the top lane farming maybe a fight up here though with some from gaklaxing yeah you won't be winning this one three members against one right here if the pillar is going to be coming out in just a moment trying to do anything against that nautilus and the kill is going to be going over to that karma i would like to see it go over to that aatrox he can make a little bit more use out of the gold however karma with that athenes is cementing herself into that support build i do anticipate a um some other support items coming out very very soon for this guy but with a top laner dead they will be trying to go for this dragon we do have the ultimate available on oriana and coming up very very soon with that fiddlesticks he's gonna have to play careful yeah super chase kind of roam as well now we are going to be seeing a lot of teleports coming in. Nautilus is going to be teleporting. It is going to be the shutdown right there on to the Trundle. Nautilus ultimate coming out, trying his best to knock up these guys. However, Aatrox with his ultimate available, he's trying his best to get away. And it is going to be, it is going to be the Rift Herald. Sorry, I'm blinking. The Rift Herald going over to the side of Eternal Esports. Fiddlesticks picking it up, and they're going to try their best to capitalize this advantage and get themselves that early mid lane turret, just cracking open the map for their team. Really good turnaround here in this three game set. Yeah, Eternal looking like an entirely different team to game number one, really using their win cons well. And this is something that we love to see a team using Herald effectively, but Vicro going in. That is going to be the enormous Fiddlesticks ultimate, able to get that quick channel right there. They aren't going to get any kills yet, but they are going to get one onto the Thresh and another kill there 
on to that trundle. Not having so much luck this game. A fat Karma ultimate coming out, almost getting another kill on the Luna, but a two for O and a tower and more tower <laughs> damage onto that tier two for the side of Eternal. These guys are playing this game by the books. They know exactly what they need to be doing and exactly where they need to be pressing their advantage. Yeah, really nice play. They get themselves the Herald and they use it effectively as well. Not using it originally to take down the weaker two or three first plates. Instead, using their four-man power to break those first couple of plates and then casting the Herald to do the true damage bump into the lower HP turret. Get it essentially for free. Really nice little macro play, something that I like to see coming out from teams. It's something that's pretty simple to get a hold of, but it's something that you don't so sometimes can go amiss. And around all of that Rift Herald shenanigans that occurred, the thing that uh, that Omega Gaming Unleashed traded for there was just power on adjustment and a solar flare bar. Oh, it is going to be a 2v2, but not if the teleports have anything to say about. This is looking like a 5v2 right here. Leona trying her best to dive right there on the Thresh, but it is going to be a lot of damage coming right there from the feelers. Another kill going over to Karma. That is the first kill going over to their team so far in this fight. They used a lot of teleports trying to get this. However, they only netted one kill. So you have to start asking yourself, was that worth it for them? Were they able to get the maximum value out of that team fight? It's going to be dependent on whether or not they can continue to press with five people. And it looks like they're just going to back off. And honestly, you know, five people for that play probably wasn't needed. And they're going to regret not having those TPs later on. Going to look to see if Eternal can use that TP advantage later on. Obviously, Rain doesn't have his available yet. But there will be a window where he can use his teleport to a greater advantage than Super Chase was able to there. And something else, just to quickly mention that the... All of these kills going on the Karma, you pointed it out on the top side, isn't the best place for this gold to be spiked into. Karma's only going to be able to do so much damage. She's really looking to just enable the carries. Adjustment and Super Chase are what is going to be the win condition for Unleashed here. And if they're not getting the resources, not getting the gold funneled into them effectively, then it's going to make their life a little bit harder trying to get a kill. But Path here. Ooh, but kills are really nice if you can get them onto the support so early in this fight. But not a Fiddlesticks has something to wear. An absolutely huge team fight ultimate coming right there from the Fiddlesticks. Two kills going over to his sides, but Aphelios getting his first kill of the game right there on that Leona, who did find herself caught out. That means if we go for any fight when this dragon does inevitably spawn here in about 15 seconds, it is going to be a 4v3. They do have the Trundle, they do have the Karma, they do have the Aphelios. But he's still not strong enough to do more damage than Tristana here in a fight. This is going to be a very easy second dragon and an infernal one at that for the side of Eternal Esports. Yeah, they're going to be feeling really good. Really nice crowstone from Shreyu there. Catching out Unleashed. Oof, Dredgeline just hits the wall there. You know, they thought they'd got the pick on Path. And maybe they have a pick on some Alcrim here. Absolutely. Oh man, picks on some Malcolm Heaven in the name of the game so far, and just barely. Oh, oh Fat Ophelios ultimate coming out here. 200 years worth of damage right there coming onto the enemy team. Absolutely obliterating the Tristana and the Nautilus there on the team. It was going to be the Fiddlesticks getting the Infernal Drake for his team, meaning it's two Drakes to one right now. But we are seeing some fat kills come over here for the side of Omega Gaming. We predicted this one wasn't going to be very close. However, Eternal Esports are going to be the ones ahead right here, 16 minutes into this game. We will be seeing Baron coming up here in about 14 minutes. And things are just going to be even harder and harder for Omega Gaming the longer this game goes on. With the amount of value that Eternal Shreyu is getting in that jungle, things are going to be absolutely devastating if you're going to be an 80 carry with no dashes in your kit on adjustment right now yeah adjustment really needs to rely on princeton and vicro here to keep himself safe which isn't always what you want as a as an ad carry you know typically you might like some more self heal in your kit but thresh karma definitely going to be able to provide a little bit of help a lot of sustainability for yourself and as soon as this runance comes through for adjustment he's going to be feeling really good about team fights but something that i'd like to see for him to come through is just a qss might not seem like mm. a lot, but he really needs to pay that tax. As if Fiddlesticks gets an engage from Fog of War, that's going to cause a fear. Don't need to talk about the CC that Leona and Nautilus provide, because that just comes in spades. And maybe... Absolutely. We are seeing a little bit of a fight here in the top lane. Ignite coming through here from this Karma. But being that uh, she does a lot of damage there through the auto attacks, uh, weakening the auto attacks into her combos, all that extra health and armor there from the Nautilus is really going to dissuade that all in there. 
from the karma. So she's just going to be using that ignite that she got there from her spellbook for sort of free, not really going to get much value out of it. Meanwhile, both teams are posturing up to get vision around the Baron. It is 19 minutes, one minute until the Baron spawns. This is generally when you want to be doing this sort of thing. Leona, a little bit out of position. She is going to be caught out there by the Trundle Pillar, but a lack of follow-up means she's going to be getting away very, very scot-free. She's going to get her Ninja Tab. He's popped open again. This is going to be even harder to kill now that she has this item there is keeping her safe. The Gargoyle Stone Plate. They do have about 15 seconds, actually, on this Rift Scuttle, uh, Rift Herald until the uh, Baron spawns. So whether or not they're able to get this would mean a little bit more of an advantage there to press before that Baron spawns. Yeah, and the only turrets that have actually fallen in this game have been taken with the Rift Herald, so only oh, the Oh, they have one. five seconds. Are they going to get it? No. Nope. Three seconds, two seconds. Oh, this might. No! <laughs> they're not going to be able to finish the Rift Herald. They had... It was at 200 HP, man. That was so close. Yeah, Eternity not valuing the Herald enough, valuing the top wave instead. Hate to see it. Went off uh. to the top lane, didn't finish the Herald. Um, you know, that's actually a lot of resources committed, you know, or a lot of time committed rather. Not resources, so to say, but they spend 30 seconds essentially doing nothing in the Rift Herald. They give Unleashed a little bit of time to pick up their farm elsewhere and sort of set up a little bit of vision with control wards we can see littering their own red side jungle. So protection into their own jungle has been found, but trying to extend anywhere further than that is going to be quite difficult for Unleashed. And it's something Absolutely. that it's, it's really good to see because Shreyu on this Fiddlesticks has been using Fog of War really well to get nice engages with the Crow Storm and good turnarounds on fights. So if they're just able to keep tabs on where Shreyu is at all times, then it's going to make Unleashed's life so much easier when they're trying to take these team fights, maybe trying to catch out path for warding too aggressively or catch out rain for stepping a little bit too far forward. Currently though, we're ah. looking and we've got, you know, no turrets taken for Unleashed. They've had multiple opportunities to maybe group and take an objective off of one team fights, but they've just not quite managed to translate that into any turrets so far. Drake spawning in a minute. Team's looking to set up vision around this bot side now, alter altering from the top side back down to this bot side. Absolutely, and I gotta say, the one saving grace that Omega Gaming does have is they know what their win condition is, and they've been doing a good job of funneling their gold uh, onto adjustment here on this Aphelios. They saw how big he came up in that last team fight, but whether or not he's able to get a fatter ultimate like he did there in that first team fight, uh, when we have this next dragon spawning here in about 30, 45 seconds, will determine whether or not his team has a chance going forward. The Baron is also on the map right now, so if they do see a team fight here, that results in a wipe. They could easily turn this into a Baron and all the extra gold and objectives that will go along with that. Very crucial fights coming up here in the next few seconds. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to see Adjustment maybe cycling his guns just a little bit more, you know. If you're looking towards a team fight, Chakram gun, really useful, but Gravitum is good for an engage, and then you really want to be using that Flamethrower, so I'm not sure what is next up in his cycle, but... If it's not Flamethrower, the team fight's going to be a little bit more difficult for them. As we see Shreyu starting up the Drake here. Smalcrum not in a position to contest just yet. Absolutely, absolutely. We are seeing the Orianna Ball doing its best to try and zone out the enemy team. Trundle just walking forward, trying to get some kind of a smite right there. But they've absolutely turned off the Dragon. Ooh, and it is going to be Trundle going down to that Tristana. Meanwhile, on the back line, we do see Orianna taking down the Aphelios. So far, this team is absolutely devastating. Or Omega Gaming getting so much damage right there onto the carries. That was a three for zero for the side of Eternal Esports, and they're looking for the Baron. Yeah, Princeton could, uh, sorry, Adjustment couldn't step up at all. He got hit by the Death Charge from Nautilus. Shockwave came through as well, and they spared no hesitation when focusing the uh, Aphelios, acknowledging that's their one carry and that that's who they needed to kill. And as you mentioned, you know, they get themselves the Drake, and it wasn't a wipe but two supports essentially left available mean that Eternal are going to go for this Baron. So Malcolm has respawned. The Baron's only at half HP, but now the rest of Eternal are here. They're going to try and burst this down from 4k before Sir Malcolm gets there. Absolutely. Things are looking very, very close right now. Teleport coming out right now, but this is an easy Baron right here. Whether or not they're going to look for the team fight out of this, they do have the speed up available for the Karma, but Aatrox trying his best to try and get some kind of catch up. However, they're just too far away. They are going to look for the backs. However, we might see a mid lane tower going down here for Omega Gaming. They do have a lot of people right there. And they do have a lot of damage here for this tower. They do have the uh, proc right there on the demolish and it's gonna be getting a slight advantage for them in opening up this map. They are going to be down 
3K, almost 4K right here, 24 minutes into this game. And they're going to have to be fighting against the Baron buff for the next few minutes. Yeah, with that Baron buff, it's probably going to allow them to either take a lot of this standing gold because, you know, two outer turrets still remaining. All three of the inner turrets are still available for Eternal to take. That's a lot of gold for them to pick up. And also Baron lasting about three minutes is going to run them down to the time where the dragon does spawn and it's that all important infernal soul that eternal are going to be looking to take It'll be interesting to see whether or not unleashed can make something happen besides that as smalcom is on this top side here yeah we are going to see a little bit of a fight right here from the atrox against the nautilus tail is Zoda's time jungler gank in the top lane we do see the ultimate coming right there from simulacrum trying to get as much shred right there on the nos as he can but he is going to have the stopwatch uh for this fight and with oriana coming up they're going to have to turn that away Two ultimates used on the side of Omega Gaming and Eternal Esports knows exactly how to play this Crow one. Storm. They're looking for the towers. A Crow Storm coming out right here from the Fiddle Six Mini. A fat pick right there onto Princeton. Princeton not doing too much for his team fight. They're hammering down these towers right here with that Tristana damage. Aatrox is going to be looking for the back, so they're probably going to be looking for some kind of a team fight right here uh, underneath this tier three inhibitor tower. Uh, Jordan's going to look for as much damage as possible right here on the PLS, landing down his own little bit of turret and trying to clear this wave. They're not going to be looking for the dive. They are going to have enough members of their team to dissuade that. Uh, meanwhile, Oriana trying to deal with that wave in the mid lane, just pushing that one down. They're going to be pushing from two lanes now with that Baron buff. Fiddlesticks does not have his ultimate yet again for about another 20 or 30 seconds. Probably going to be looking for something here. Maybe it's going to be the top lane tower. Yeah, you know, we they're, they're playing this by the book here, Eternal. They've got the Baron and, you know, they didn't have the turrets to facilitate a breakage of the base. So instead, they're just going to pick up a ton of gold and take all of the outer base turrets. They've still got a plenty of time on the Baron. So would like to see if they go up to the top side pick up another turret they do get it there and you talked about the gold lead before or once they've taken the baron sat at about 4k you know only one kill went over to eternal but they've ballooned the gold up to 6k already right now using the outer turrets and all of that standing gold to its full effectiveness they've decided they don't need to use the baron to break the base which is really smart because as long as they can get enough pressure around to get this infernal soul they'll be able to win fights and break the base that way Oh yeah, it looks like Leona, name of the game, she has been able to dodge a lot of these Thresh Hooks, keeping herself from getting caught out too much and not dying here before these objectives are able to spawn. We do have another Dragon coming up here in about 30, 45 seconds, and this would mean an Infernal Soul over for the side of Eternal Esports. An absolutely huge soul for any kind of a team comp, but keeping in mind how much damage they have when catching out enemy teams and how squishy some of the carries can be uh, for the side of Omega Gaming. This could mean as basically doom for the side of Omega if this does go the way of Eternal Esports. Yes, yeah, Malcolm really going to need to come up huge to try and find a smite, maybe find an engage here. Both teams posturing who's going to get this crab as well. Could actually be pretty useful for either team. Malcolm smites that away. Does have another one available will be able to use that for the drake and we are just waiting for the engage to come through could be from anyone rain and path stepping up to the front side of the team to try and find something with a depth charge maybe absolutely a lot of damage coming right there onto that nautilus from that turret from the aphelios he's below half lhp right now he is going to be have to be very very big here if he wants his team to survive we don't have any deaths right now on the Oriana, but that could change during this fight they are going to be getting a huge oriana ultimate right here it's Crow crowstorm trying to be channeled right now but it's going to be cancelled in that aphelios he almost gonna be able to do a lot of damage but he is going to get killed right here so early in this fight leona coming up absolutely huge it's a lot of damage right now here from the trundle trying his best to whittle down that leona Ooh, but meanwhile he is going to get the double kill aatrox coming up absolutely huge here on the bottom line putting the team on his back so far in this fight and absolutely gets so many kills Right there. I believe he was 0-3, but now that is 3-3 right here for the Aatrox. They're able to turn around. They're able to get this fifth dragon of the game, bringing them to two dragons. Not enough to bring them to soul point, but it is going to be enough to turn this one around. Absolutely huge team fight from Super Chase there. Eternal seeing the Aphelios, killing the Aphelios, but they forget about the secondary carry. You talked about it in the draft, Danielson, that Super Chase was going to be a strong threat on this Aatrox, and Eternal didn't hear you. You know, they killed Adjustment, who had a wonderful game number one. 
they burn his flash, they burn his QSS, but Super Chase just runs rampant in the team fight. Samalcrum as well able to cause a lot of disruption. He managed to pick up Path, they get themselves the Infernal Drake, and it stops the Infernal Soul going over to Eternal and really swings the gold quite heavily back. It was sitting at 6k previously, pulled that back down to about 2,500 now, and Death Stance completed for Super Chase. Going to look to buy it a little bit more as well. Game's right back in the mix right now. 50-50 for the team. Absolutely. And speaking of 50-50, we now have another Baron on the map. And with both junglers now at level 13, we could be looking for another fight like we saw there on the Infernal Drake. We do have a Knight's Vow coming out right there from the Aphelios. All this team really needs to do right now is keep him alive from that initial burst. If he's able to get even like three or five seconds of auto attacks on the enemy, but it's going to be a fairly crazy, crazy fight. It's going to be Tristana looking for that damage right there on Huge. Big Trundle. A fat Orion ultimate, five member of that team. And combined with the Fiddlesticks ultimate, they stand no chance. But now if Aatrox has the same thing to say about, but he doesn't have anything to say about him. His mic is muted. He's going to be a clean five for O for the side of Eternal Esports and another Baron going over to their way. Absolutely insane team fight from Eternal. Shreyu on top of the Orianna Shockwave. Midget setting that one up perfectly. TPs in, flashes forward, sees the montage in his eyes. A five-man Shockwave on top of a five-man Crow Storm. Absolutely nothing that Omega Gaming Unleashed could do. They translate that into a Baron, and Midget in the mid lane looking like he's going to try and break the base as well, just to top it all off. Insane team fight and a miracle play from Eternal. Absolutely. That was exactly what they needed right there at that time. They're going to be having so much pressure here with that Baron. And with another Dragon spawning here in about two and a half minutes, they're going to have that much more to work with when they eventually go for another fight here at the Infernal Soul. Trundle's actually going to be looking for some kind of fight here in the jungle. Whether or not he's able to get anything here onto the Fiddlesticks is going to be another question entirely. He's using his own ultimate to escape. However, he's going to be hit by the Aatrox W, meaning that he's going to having five members of the enemy team all just trying to last hit him, and it is going to be going over to the side of Aphelios. A little bit more gold to work with right here uh, in this game. He does have the Vamp Scepter, meaning that I'd like to see a Death's Dance actually coming out here before he decides to complete his QSS full item. Yeah. And all that together could mean he stays alive in these team fights. He's able to continue auto attacking uh, even through the Fiddlesticks ultimate, which would be absolutely huge uh, for his team for turning this one around. Yeah, he really needs to keep himself alive in these team fights and make sure that it's not all super chase on this Aatrox up on the top side. He's, he's doing his best adjustment, trying to do as much damage as he can. But the dive is just too strong. We've got Nautilus, Oriana is able to put the ball onto a Fiddlesticks as well. And Eternity and Path also have no problems getting access to the backline. Rocket Jump coming through, Zenith Blade, Solar Flares. Adjustment has a really difficult time positioning in this fight and your prayers have been answered, you know. Hasn't picked up the QSS completion. Said we've got that Aegis definitely working towards the Death's Dance right now. Adjustment going to be looking to stay alive and sustain a little bit during these team fights. One minute ten left until this Infernal Drake unleashed. Looking like they're probably going to be the first ones to setting up the play, but it is at the trade of some bot lane pressure. Rain down on this bot side, shoving in another wave before he moves over to the Drake. Absolutely. Right now, if you are Omega Gaming, you want to be looking for some kind of a pick before this Infernal spawns. You don't want to be taking another 50-50 team fight. They got so lucky with that only two-man Orion ultimate and the cancelled Fiddlesticks ultimate in that previous fight at the Infernal Dragon. Now that Fiddlesticks has his ultimate again, we do have the Orion ultimate, but we do have the Nautilus ultimate coming out, trying to get some kind of a fight here onto the enemy team. A lot of ultimates coming right there on the the Aphelios. He has so much to deal with, but Aatrox coming up absolutely huge on the back line, but with Tristana just absolutely nuking him so quickly. A Aatrox giving to be able to take so much damage, but Tristana just jumping in all over everyone. A quadra kill right here for the for the Tristana. She's going to be looking for the Penta. She has so much damage and the Penta kill for the Tristana. So many GGs coming out here from the side of Omega Gaming. This is almost game right here. Whether or not they have enough time, which they should, 20 seconds minimum on these death timers. They're funneling down these inhibitor towers. They're funneling down these towers. They're going to be funneling down the Nexus very, very quickly here in game two. We're going to be going to game three. 
yeah, wonderful team fight from Eternal right there. Eternity in particular picks himself up the pentakill. Almost looks like it could have gone the way of Unleashed, but just the strength that they had, how far ahead they were. Eternal take that team fight with ease. Don't lose anybody. Get themselves the pentakill onto Eternity, and they're gonna they're gonna stake their claim back in this series, taking us to one to one now overall. Absolutely. And if you look at the damage charts, you just see the story of this game. Oriana coming up absolutely huge uh, here in game two of this potential three game series, dealing so much damage and having such valuable shockwaves uh, in these team fights. The email put out just so much damage there on a champion. She really did itemize for the burst. She did go there for the spellbinder, for the seraphs, and for a death cap. All of that combined is going to mean a lot of ability power for that champion. It's going to mean a very, very much dead Aphelios and a dead Aatrox in these fights. And without their carries, they're only relying on the Trundle and the Karma there for the damage. They really need to be doing a better job of keeping their carries alive. You are 100% correct. You know, the they really tried. Vicro hooked out the Fiddlesticks ultimate, played away Death Charge, or not the Death Charge, but played away the Nautilus, did his best to keep Aphelios alive, but the, at the end of the day, the amount of damage that Eternity was able to do, he killed Unleashed Frontline faster than Adjustment could kill Eternals, and he was just able to run through the rest of the team and picked up all of all of those kills and picked up the win in the end. With that being said, though, we are just going to throw it to a small break whilst we get us ourselves all set, ready and prepared for game number three of this series. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be a wonderful series to finish out. <laughs> 